Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video I wanted to very briefly take you through my new Notion template for the PhD thesis. I think this would work pretty well for any kind of thesis writing, um, whether it's PhD, Masters, whatever. This is definitely a more simple version of what you might have seen in my overall PhD and productivity notion template and I just wanted to talk you through it and take you on a little tour. So just to say very briefly, if you previously purchased the PhD and productivity notion template which includes everything to do with the PhD and all of the productivity content, you will get this for free without having to purchase anything. This is a note for any future purchasers to hang on to your receipt for the template and you will be able to use that link to get to the Notion template again and you'll see now that what's been added into it is the Thesis Template 2.0 and you'll be able to download that into your new Notion. Obviously you'll have to sort of rejig things a bit and add it in but you won't have to buy anything new basically. Same thing goes as I will be progressing through my PhD, I will be making updates and anytime there's an update basically from now on I'm going to send out an email telling anybody who has previously purchased the template about the update and how to get that for free. So if you haven't purchased the template before and you're not really interested in getting all of the productivity side of things but more just the thesis template, this is now available if you go to store.phdandproductivity.com and that's all linked down below. Um, so this one is available at a cheaper price since it doesn't include the productivity content. So there's now three versions, one that's PhD and productivity, one that's just productivity and one that's just PhD. If anyone has any questions about that, do just send me an email. Um, if you've lost your receipt, send me an email and I will send you a new one. I also just wanted to, of course, say a huge thank you to everybody who has supported me by purchasing the Notion template so far. Honestly, I, I never really could have thought that what I made here on YouTube would have led to a point where I have a little bit of sustainable income coming in from something that I made and that it is related to being like productive and something that I'm really interested in so I honestly am so thankful Um, I really just never would have thought that this would be the case if you looked back two and a half years ago almost when I started the channel Um, and I just wouldn't really believe that it was here if that makes sense so a huge thank you to everybody. I really, honestly, really appreciate it. This is how the template sort of looks. Um, it's got the logo as usual. And there's a couple of things that I sort of just kept the same from the last one. So you'll see there's this, there's a place that you can go in that has the statement of purpose. And this is just based on a blog article that I found. So it has some of the questions. Most people will have to do a statement of purpose as part of their sort of application process. But if you don't, I definitely still recommend doing that as it is a really good way to just have something to look back at for like a mission statement for your PhD. Definitely very motivational. The next is the abstract. So that again is based on a video that I wrote and a class that I did in academic writing. And so it's definitely a good thing to do as well, just to give yourself a sense of what it is that you're trying to achieve with the PhD. And um, the research plan then, this is somewhere that you can include a Gantt chart of the next four years. The reason that I prefer having it like this is I do find the timeline feature, which we'll see later on. If you're trying to look at more than one year at a time, I just don't really feel like it gives you that sense. So I think it can really help to lay it out this way. So essentially what you do is you just duplicate these blocks and copy them in. Um, to the different areas here to create that sort of Gantt chart and most of these will have like sections where there is some helpful videos in terms of things that I've made before that I think are useful for these um, activities. Then in here we have a full thesis draft notes so this I will get back to but essentially it's not something that I would personally use because I don't really keep my my full draft of my thesis in here I use Overly for that and I have a video on that so I'll have that linked but I know a lot of people do like to keep all of that in Notion so I did want to put that in there for anybody who will be feeling that way. The main section here then is the sort of writing progress um, or research progress um, section and this is definitely the sort of new part that I've been working on for the last while so it really depends on your PhD on your thesis, how this might look for you. Um, in terms of the chapters, this is one version, but if I could just show you mine as well. Um, my version is quite different. 
because I, I, I did make a video about this recently, like laying out all the different chapters, but I have sort of similar intro literature view, then I have data as its own chapter, I have three sort of experiment chapters essentially, and then I have a discussion and conclusion chapter. Um, so it is quite different, but it really depends on how your thesis is going to be laid out. If you do want to add a new chapter, it's quite simple, you'll just do that down here. And one thing that you'll need to do in order for it to be seen, this is currently filtered so that it is going to be by chapter. So make sure that you add it in here and then it will just always show up. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. Um, but yeah, so some people will have things graded. So this was based on somebody who was doing a DBA, a Doctorate of Business Administrative um, Administration, I think. And theirs was graded in percentages like this. Mine's not done like that and a lot of people's won't be. So you can go ahead and delete that column if that's not useful for you. And then we have words written and words required. So this is just sort of an estimate. Again, this was based on one person's sort of DBA, but this could be sort of anything. So I adjusted this a little bit for mine, you'll see. So I have about 10,000 for each of the sort of data and um, sort of experiment chapters. And then I have a longer literature view and, you know, all of that. Um, 70,000 words is sort of standard but it, it again it depends a lot of areas will have very strict amounts of words and others won't whether it's the type of research area or the university it really depends so um you can adjust those and even if you just want to put in some estimates that's totally up to you but what's good about doing that is you can put in sort of progress so you could change that if you wanted to like pages and just have it be the pages written um, I think the one thing that you possibly need to do in that case would be, um, let's just see if we need to change the formula. And um, probably not actually. So you probably would just be able to switch that over to pages and then it would work just as well. Um, so if you are trying to edit any of these, like when you click on the sort of column names, you can go into this edit property and that will allow you to change a lot of things. And the same thing if you're trying to change anything about the view, I'll, I'll come back to that in just a little second. but. Um, what's good about this is you can see the progress and that's quite nice because as you go through it then you can have that progress bar fill up which I really like and then I also have working dates and again this is a formula that calculates how many full weeks there are in this time the one thing that I find annoying about this is it doesn't give you like uh, a decimal like three and a half weeks but you know that's sort of a small thing I'm sure I could probably fix that but I'm not entirely sure how to and then I have this other section in here that again may or may not be relevant to your work. So rather than having just the chapters, um, there's also an area where we have the projects. So again, for me, I have a bunch of different research projects relating to my PhD. So if we go into my thesis template, you can see I have research and I've got a bunch of different projects that I need to complete when, within the next sort of six, seven months before getting to write my thesis. And I have those all tracked in here as well and some like notes in here. So um, that's that's sort of what I do. But it's really up to you if that is something that's relevant for yours. Some people will just be going along the process. Um, I think it really helps to organize things by projects and to include all of the notes for that project in there. And then potentially once you finish that project, you can just move all the notes into the relative chapter. Again, we've got working dates here and you can see I didn't include all of these other properties because I didn't feel like they, those were uh, necessary for the research projects. So if you're looking to change out what features are shown, um, so you can see the properties here, we have all of these that you can sort of turn on and off. So this just helps to organize the filter of the database. Um, so we don't really need that. Um, you could add on other things if you need to. So words written, that's not really relevant here. And same thing with notes so we'll just x out of those and yeah the last part of this part is that we also have a timeline view which is sort of as i mentioned the sort of gantt chart um let me probably just pop that down there um and this just sort of helps to organize your view of how things are going to go over the next couple of months again as you go through it like it doesn't really help if you have a lot because we can only go up to a year so if you're trying to look at the next four years that's not really possible in notion um but i do think the way it is for the next if you're looking at the next six months or so it is quite helpful coming back to, then to the chapters so basically what i would do is within each of these what you can do is you could 
first of all, I'll come back to this, but we have a sort of filtered to-do list in here. But what you could do would be to start a synced block. And that is somewhere where you can have a repeated amount of words somewhere else in your database. So you would need to do this yourself because if I put these in and then you copy the template, it'll copy mine and then it means you can't really have them. So this is something that you'd want to do after you set it up, that you could start a synced block and then move in this note here and then we're going to copy and sync and then over here in the full thesis draft notes we're going to go into introduction and underneath that we're going to copy in our synced block and that means whether we edit in here or we edit in here they're going to be the same so if I say edited in there it's now edited in there so those are really helpful so if you have notes in all of the different chapters then you add all of these together it means you have all of your notes in one place there which I think is really helpful again I'm going to go ahead and delete that because if I if you go ahead and take this template then it will uh, not really work oh and I see I accidentally already deleted what was in there so that's something you do have to be careful with um, Not that we need this little bit of words, but you know, it's still just where it was before. Okay, um, all the rest of these, again, they don't really have anything in them, but what you could do is just fill in your notes as you're going and fill in any relative articles as well. You could just throw in there. The one that does though is the literature review. And this is something I'm gonna come back to because I'm not reworking my literature review at the moment. I thought I was going to this month, but I don't think I will. And so until I'm really doing that, I don't feel like I can make a full video explaining my process. But I have some credits here, first of all, to Holly Jane Woods. Um, for sure, check out Holly Jane's Instagram and YouTube, but especially this video that she's made about syncing Notion and Zotero. I recently moved all of my um, papers and that into Notion and into, well, into Zotero and then all the notes into Notion um, because of this video, because it's all synced. And there's a person called Devanoni who made this integration so that allows basically you to sync up your Zotero with your Notion. And so this is just blank and this is the sort of um, database that they gave so they have bibliographical information, then reading status, then literature review, and then books. And then I just added in some filters by topic. So that's sort of a handy way to get into specific parts of your literature. So for example, if you are trying to write up a small section, you can just like filter by those tags. I think a lot of what's in here isn't super relevant for the way that I do my literature review, but I do think this is quite relative, relevant for a lot of people's literature reviews. So I think, um, this is really great. So this is, again, this is made by Divinoni and I have all the sort of credits there on the page. Um, but Holly Jane's YouTube video basically will just explain all of the steps. I think I'll eventually make my own video explaining my full Notion Zotero workspace because I also use an iPad and there is a Zotero app on the iPad that allows you to annotate um, and have all those go into Zotero and then have those notes go into Notion. So. Um, it has been very helpful, but I'm not quite there yet with that video. Like, I'm not quite there with my own method to be able to explain it. So that's all in there. I'll just show you briefly how it looks on mine so far. So mine actually doesn't have a lot of its own notes in it just yet, but I, I basically only just got started with this. So you can see in my literature review, in my own notion, I've got all these articles because mine's um, my citation style is the, the bib tech. So this is quite heavy. But if we look just at all the articles, it's great. So there's 266 articles just automatically loaded in there, which is really, really helpful. Um, and the point would be that you have your literature view then um, over here with all of your notes. Now, I think the way that I'm going to do this is just whatever comments I have like annotated on the file, I get those automatically loaded in, but I couldn't quite figure out how to do that. So again, more on that coming soon, but for now, I'll leave you with this. So getting back to the actual template then, this is something where you can just include, again, all of your specific notes about your literature review. And so you could go ahead and have some synced blocks in there again, um, and then have a full synced block 
out in the main page. Uh, again, I've got some more useful videos down here, just other videos that I've made on literature reviews so far. And those videos have a mixture of sort of techniques and stuff that you can use. Okay. All the rest of these don't really have anything in them, so moving along. We've got the research diary. Now, if you have seen a few of my videos on my Notion template before, this isn't really anything new. However, if this is new for you, there are two templates. So one is meeting notes. So when we open this as a page, you can just sort of fill that out as meeting notes and that will have um, a topic of the meeting, materials, anything like that, attendance and any notes. Um, and then the other option we have is the research diary entry. So that again, just has some prompts for sort of reflecting on your research and you can add into this whatever you want. So if you do want to um, adjust any of these, we'll just delete this one first. But if you do want to adjust any of these, you can open a new one and like adjust these by going over to meeting notes and then doing edit this template. And then you can see you edit these templates. Um, and whatever you want to do with that is up to you. So I've got these organized so that you can relate them to a specific thesis chapter or a specific project and also include a one-line summary. And the one-line summary is basically so that you can find this note again. And if you're looking for specific notes by chapter, you can see we've organized them here. So if you're looking, starting to write up, let's say one of the chapters, this would be the great way to get all of your notes from the specific chapter organized. Um, alternatively, if you're looking by type, whether it's a meeting note or a research note, we have that view as well. Um, similar vibes here with the to-do list. So if you've seen any of my other sort of task management systems videos, you'll you'll know that I probably won't be using this because I have a much bigger task management, management system and that's really more in the productivity template than in the sort of thesis template. Um, so another option would be you could take the master sort of to-do list and just filter it so that it's only things related to your thesis or research in here. Uh, another video coming soon about all of my like task management because I think I'm I'm really there with my own system now but for now I think a lot of people necessarily don't want a big task management system and so for anyone who's just looking for that more simplified thesis template this is the one because it just has tasks and then you can search by context that's like so you get all your email tasks done at once and then you can search by chapter because I know a lot of people are sort of working through things in that sort of chaptered approach and you probably just want to be looking at the the sort of ones for a specific chapter. And that's pretty much it. Down the bottom, I just have some extra videos related to thesis writing and that. But overall, this is meant to be just sort of a sort of really simple thesis template um, for anyone who is looking for something, I think, a bit more streamlined and simplified compared to maybe the PhD and productivity template that is quite big and scary maybe to get started with. Again, just saying that in terms of purchasing the template, you can do that using the link below. But if you've already purchased the PhD and productivity template, you don't need to purchase this one. You just go back to the link from the email you got with the receipt from purchasing originally. And you'll now see that you have access when you go to that link, you'll see dashboard one, dashboard two, and then thesis template 2.0. Go ahead and duplicate thesis template 2.0 to your notion and then sort of fix it up. So. Hope this video was helpful. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe and stick around for any more thesis videos that will be coming soon because I'm now in my last stages of my PhD. And yeah, if you have any tips or advice, if there's anything you think I'm missing from this template, let me know and I'll try and adjust that. And thanks so much for watching. Thanks to all of my wonderful members as always. And I'll see you all in the next video.